A feeling of dissociation from his senses, an inability to think straight or interpret what he sees or hears. Things begin to look and sound different, slower, artificial, unreal. The first time it happened, he thought he was losing his mind that the whole cognitive framework by which he made sense of the world had disintegrated for good, and everything from then on would just be undifferentiated sound and color. So you go to sleep now, okay? Let me take care of you. I tried so hard. I want so strong Due to the Star Trek franchise's typically episodic structure, we rarely see characters deal with trauma on a long-term basis. Despite many of them experiencing what would be life-changing traumas on an almost weekly basis. Yet, like at the end of Star Trek Voyager's Year of Hell, it seems like almost always to be wiped away. Yet, there are two notable examples of Trek characters dealing with long-term trauma on screen. Captain Jean-Luc Picard and Hugh Culber. While there are certainly other examples in the franchise, such as Ash Tyler slash Voke dealing with trauma from his body morphing, Trip dealing with the death of his sister, or Kira dealing with her survival of the Cardassian occupation, and Nog, who deserves and will get his own entire video, Picard and Culber give us perhaps the most clear discussion of PTSD, and specifically complex dissociative post-traumatic stress disorder, and how one begins to walk the path of healing. Before we get much further, I want to give a brief disclaimer here. I can't speak for everyone who suffers from PTSD or depression, nor do I expect to with this video. This video is just to give a brief overview of something that often gets talked about, but is rarely truly understood on a complex level, and explain it using Star Trek. There are many more complexities and types of PTSD out there, and many more ways that people cope, understand, or define their own PTSD. I encourage everyone who is interested in learning more to seek out more information from professional sources than a Star Trek YouTuber like myself. To paraphrase Spock, this is just meant to be the beginning of wisdom, not the end. Where does PTSD come from? Many of us understand that one develops PTSD after a trauma, but why? Why specifically does a traumatic event leave such a mark? PTSD, at least in its most common form, comes from a loss of control during an intensely damaging event. When Captain Picard is assimilated by the Borg in The Best of Both Worlds, he has his individuality stripped from him. He becomes a passenger in his own body. He cannot control his actions, as the Borg now control his mind. Quote, Disassociation can be interpreted as an emergency defense, or a shutoff mechanism. It is understood as an attempt by the individual to prevent overwhelming flooding of consciousness at the time of trauma. It is argued that the individual subconsciously cannot tolerate being present emotionally during the trauma, but cannot control the situation, and therefore protects him or herself from experiencing it in the moment via disassociation. When someone is in the middle of an intensely traumatic event, they often try to shut down their consciousness. They try to block out what's happened to them, to basically have a sort of out-of-body experience, so that they can separate what is happening to them from their body. This is exactly what happens to Picard. Obviously, his disassociation was made literal by the Borg Collective taking control of his body, but we do know that while the body is under Borg control, the individual is still conscious, watching their body as an outside observer. Picard disassociated from his body during his trauma, watching it from afar. The exact same thing happens to Culber on a much more literal level. After being murdered by Ash Tyler slash Voke, his consciousness leaves his body and is placed in the mycelial network by Stemets. He no longer has a body to speak of and escaped from the harm inflicted upon him. One disassociates in order to try to hold on to their sanity, to hold on to some idea of control over the events. A way to escape their loss of autonomy. They become an observer. Matthew was on gave way, and he fell 30 meters. 15, actually. Well, enough to puncture your shoulder. He would have bled out, too, if it weren't for a certain Dr. Kashkuli, who was... For if they're outside their body, it becomes understandable within their own confines of their mind why they couldn't control the events happening to them. I tried so hard. I 
Yet, as Picard shows, even as one disassociates from the trauma happening to them in order to maintain sanity and have some sense of control, it's just a way to cope. Because what's really happening is a total inability to stop something horrific happening to them. This sense of loss of control can happen in any traumatic event. Any event where a person feels a sense of loss of control over an incredibly damaging event to their body and mind can lead to disassociation and eventual PTSD. Disassociation does not save Culber. Even in the network, we learn that he still experiences new trauma, that he cannot escape and was decided for him by Tyler and Stemmets. It's only when he is given the chance to escape, to have autonomy over his own actions again, that the trauma ends. The same happens for Picard. When he is finally given a chance to assert control over his body again, he manages to find a way back to himself. It's him. It's Picard. Yet it's painful and difficult to re-enter a body that now feels foreign because of the violation against it. Once someone has finally escaped the trauma, they may experience PTSD, specifically because they now have to cope with an understanding that their body has not been fully determined by themselves. It has been controlled, tampered with, violated by someone else. This is made quite literal for Culver, who returns to a completely new body. It's not the one he knows, not the one that he had been living with his entire life, even if it looks so familiar. But this body was entirely reconstituted from your DNA. It's brand new down to the last molecule. You are, for lack of a better word, pristine. It's not the same. Those suffering from PTSD usually experience symptoms in four separate clusters. Number one, re-experiencing. Two, avoidance. Three, hyperarousal. And four, negative thoughts and beliefs. Re-experiencing is defined by repeated, involuntary memories of the traumatic event. Nightmares are common, or feeling like you're watching the event happening again in front of you. When you are reminded of the event, it can cause increased heart rate or sweating. This is why triggers are such a big deal. Triggers are things that remind someone of a traumatic event. These can be obvious, such as someone talking about assault around them, or they can be small, such as smelling a specific smell that you smelt during the trauma, or hearing a song that reminds you of the person who committed the violence against you. Avoidance is characterized by people trying to avoid feelings, conversations, or even people that remind them of a traumatic event. Directly after the Battle of Wolf 359, Picard claims he's leaving the Enterprise to go take some time at home to refine himself. And it's perfectly normal after what you've been through to spend a great deal of time trying to find yourself again. And what better place to find oneself than on the streets of one's home village? But really, it's about him trying to avoid being near the Enterprise, to avoid something that reminds him of his trauma. Yes, tired of the Enterprise too? The great Captain Picard of Starfleet falls to Earth ready to plunge into the water with Lewis. Hyperarousal is a reaction to these re-experiencings of trauma and the avoidance. Someone in this stage may have difficulty concentrating, have outbursts of anger, or trouble falling asleep. No! No! Why are you so angry with me? You know what, Paul? It's a good question. And finally, negative thoughts and feelings may leave them feeling a loss of interest in activities or in people they once loved, make them feel distant from others, or feel like their life has been cut short. I remember Paul. I remember loving him. But it feels like a dream. It's someone else's life. And I don't know what I feel about him now. After their own traumatic events, both Picard and Culber definitely experience all four clusters of these symptoms in sometimes quite literal ways, despite the science fiction reasons for their trauma. All of these clusters of symptoms can become overwhelming. And at those times, it's easy for someone to fall back on a tactic that worked for them before. Disassociation. 
Both Picard and Culver often disassociate from the world around them in order to escape the symptoms of PTSD, the reminders of their trauma. It's just, my, my senses, my feelings don't connect with it. Or anything, really. Their body feels not their own. Which is, again, quite literal for Culber. So, um, if my senses feel a little off, it's, it's because your new nervous system is still adjusting. So both of them still wish to leave it. It's only an escape, a brief reprieve. A helpful, useful one, but one that does not allow for healing. Something that should feel like uniquely your own is now foreign. But how does one heal from understanding that your body is not something that was completely your own choice? The process of disassociation is an elegant mechanism built into the human psychological system as a form of escape from, sometimes literally, going crazy. The problem with checking out so thoroughly is that it can leave us feeling dead inside, with little or no ability to feel our own feelings in our own bodies. The process of repair demands a reassociation with the body, a commitment to dive into the body and feel today what we couldn't feel yesterday because it was too dangerous. And I'm not letting anyone fix things I can feel. Trauma and PTSD changes you and your relationship with yourself. Yet healing from PTSD isn't about overcoming it, but working it into the definition of who you are. It's about reframing your relationship with your trauma, not ignoring it or burying it. This is going to be with you a long time, Jean-Luc. A long time. You have to learn to live with it. You have a simple choice now. Live with it below the sea with Lewis, or above the clouds with the Enterprise. You must confront those around you in healthy ways, and it must be done internally, not externally. Yet both Picard and Culber initially try to find external coping mechanisms. Culber seeks out Ash Tyler to beat him up in hopes of regaining a sense of control. Picard in first contact goes and takes on the Borg. Certainly, a desire for external retribution in order to overcome trauma is understandable. And in many cases, justifiable legally and morally. For example, rapists and abusers certainly should be prosecuted in court. Picard is right in fighting back against the Borg to defend the Federation. And perhaps Tyler deserves to answer for his murder of Culber. Though there is certainly a worthwhile discussion to be had about the morality of Saru basically pulling a Godzilla. This must be allowed to play out. Let them fight. Yet in both Picard and Culber's cases, these external confrontations still don't allow them to heal. It doesn't fix what they thought it would fix. I can understand how that might sound strange to you. I would assume everything is strange to you now. For Picard, he initially keeps trying to push for more, in hopes that if he keeps hurting the Borg, it will somehow allow him to heal. Yet it never will. His search for revenge becomes unending, almost leading him to go the way of Captain Ahab. Our weapons are useless. We must activate the auto-destruct sequence and use the escape pods to evacuate the ship. No! Sir, we should not sacrifice- We have not lost the Enterprise, Mr. Wolf. We are not going to lose the Enterprise. Not to the Borg, not while I'm in command. Culver eventually stops his fight with Tyler when he realizes that Tyler is going through the exact same thing, at least in a different way. And that by destroying a man who is also suffering won't make him feel any better. I don't even know who I am anymore. I think you're talking to. In the end, as I stated before, healing from trauma is ultimately an internal action, and one that a person must actively try to cultivate. And that's not an easy thing to do. It's even harder to acknowledge that what happened to you, even if you didn't choose it, is now a part of you. The choice to redefine themselves, to discover who they are again. That takes time. It may take a lifetime. Culber ultimately realizes this, and it's why he initially decides to leave Stemets. Because he needs the time to figure out who he is separate from someone else. I hope that whatever life you find from here, Whoever you find it with, you're happy, Hugh. You too, Paul. Picard does the same at the end of First Contact, realizing that he must sacrifice his identity as the captain of the Enterprise, the one grounding rock of identity he had, in order to finally move past the trauma that the Borg had inflicted upon him. Prepare to evacuate the Enterprise. His decision to blow up the Enterprise-E 
even if it didn't eventually turn out to be necessary, was the real emotional climax of the movie. In the end, those who suffer from PTSD often deal with the repercussions of it for the rest of their lives because, in a way, it's become a part of them. Yet, it's important to remember that it's only a part of who you are. And it doesn't have to define you, nor be wholly negative. It's up to you to define how you define yourself and how you define yourself in relation to your trauma. And I realized that, uh, you're my home. So I came back. Everything. Always came back around to you. I think Hugh Culber actor Wilson Cruz said it best. I think when people are feeling the effects of PTSD or depression, it can feel endless and like a dark pit that you think you may never see yourself out of. I think it's important to see and be reminded that those moments can be and are temporary. That we can see our way out of that darkness to a better day, a better time. Thanks so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel before you go or check out some of my other videos that I release every Friday. And if you want to help make these videos even better, give to my Patreon page, just like these fine folks did. I can't thank all of you enough for helping me pay the rent and improving the quality of these videos. And special thanks to my commander level and above Patreons, Stephen Schuhart, Michael McGee, Maggie Evans, Law Lindley, Wellington Marcus, Munir Amlani, and BBD. Thank you so much. It, it honestly really means the world to me and the fact that you guys gave at this level, it just, it honestly shocks me and humbles me and just thank you so much to you and to all my other Patreons. But as always, regardless of if you subscribe or give to my Patreon, I hope all of you live long and prosper.